Hello everyone, welcome at this webinar for CA Engineer 15. My name is Hamza Bashiri and I work as a customer service engineer at the support department of Namjek CIA. The purpose of today's webinar is to get some insight in what the possibilities are regarding steel connections and CIA engineer. Before we start this webinar, make sure that you've checked your sound settings. This can be arranged in the following window of go to webinar. Um, next, do not hesitate to ask any questions during the webinar. These can be entered in the following text box. Uh, I will try to answer them immediately after the webinar. If there are a lot of questions, I will answer them afterwards via email. This webinar will be recorded so that you can watch it later on. Um, this recording will be published on our website and also on our official YouTube channel. So let us first go over the content of this webinar. Um, I will uh, give a short introduction to the component-based method that is used for calculating the connections. Next, I will show the uh, I will show the possible connections uh, in CIA Engineer. I will also list some improvements that have been implemented since version 15. After that, some connections will be inputted in CIA Engineer. Um, the expert system will be explained. The possibilities to create mono drawings of the connection will be demonstrated in an example. Um, next, a general solution will be provided for almost every connection. And finally, I will finish this webinar with a conclusion. So, let's start with a short introduction to the component-based method. The general analytical procedure which is used for determining the resistance and stiffness properties of a joint is a so-called component-based method. The component-based method considers any joint as a set of individual basic components. Each of these basic components possesses its own strength and stiffness. The application of the component-based method requires the following steps. First, uh, we'll have to identify the active components. Consider connection as follows with the following uh, internal forces coming from the loading on the structure, of course. This connection has components that need to resist the effects that are induced by the loading. The joint is moment resisting and therefore will cause a negative moment at the connection which implies that you get tension at the top side and compression at the bottom side. You can see this in the figure since the component E um, column web in tension at the top side and component J beam flange in compression is uh, induced. And between uh, the top and bottom sides you'll have shear in the column web, C component H com um, column web panel in shear. You can see this in here. All these active components will be at identified and checked by SIA engineer. The following step is to evaluate these uh, stiffnesses and resistance uh, characteristics of each component. Because all these basic components contribute to the whole stiffness of the joint and should be therefore evaluated for their stiffness and resistance contribution. The following step is uh, to, assembly, uh, to assemble all these components. Uh, into an equ equivalent stiffness of the joint that takes into account all these uh, basic components. So in this figure you see that you have mul multiple components um, and which will be uh, reduced or, or, or replaced by an equivalent uh, stiffness component, K equivalent. And the final step is to ev evaluate the stiffness and resistance characteristics of the whole joint. Um, you can see here in the in the graph, which summarizes basically uh, the the stiffness and resistance characteristics of the whole joint. You can find uh, SCA INI and SCA and uh, the the design uh, the rotational stiffness. 
and you can also find MERD, the design moment uh, resistance in the graph. So um, it summarizes the, the, the whole uh, stiffness and resistance characteristic of the joints in this one graph. This graph is available in the calculation output of SIA Engineer, which will be shown later on in an example. Next, we will talk about the possible um, connections in SIA Engineer. Um, the first one is the frame rigid connection. According to Eurocode 3, um, basically uh, CI Engineer supports all frame rigid connections that are mentioned in Eurocode 3 uh, for the following um, sections. For the rolled I-beam, the sym symmetrical welded I section, the isometrical welded I section, an I section with a haunch, uh, built up I section, built up from plate and the T section and also the RHS profiles or the rolled hollow sections. Uh, here you see figure uh, 1.2 from Eurocode 3 uh, which shows uh, the possible frame rigid uh, joint configurations. Uh, you have uh, figure 1.2a which shows the major axis joint configuration, so connections on the strong axis I YY. Um, here you see a uh, single side beam to column joint, a beam splice, um, double sided beam to column joint configuration. Uh, also a column splice is shown here and a column base. So the major axis joint configurations uh, are supported. Also the minor axis joint configurations uh, such as a beam beam collect, uh, connection on the web of a column for example or a beam-beam connection on the web of a beam. Um, some examples of these uh, possible connections in CA Engineer. Um, so, for example, the beam-column connection. Uh, it is possible to input it as a bolted connection or as a welded uh, connection. A side note to know is that uh, the welds of a bolted connection are also being checked um, because these welds are necessary uh, to connect uh, the end plate with uh, the beam and is also a part of the connection. So not only uh, the bolts are being uh, checked but also the welds of a bolted connection is also being checked by SIA Engineer. Uh, the next one is beam beam. Here you can uh, or beam splice as mentioned in uh, Eurocode 3 uh, it can be configured with uh, bolts or only uh, as a welded connection and the column base of course uh, which also can be inputted in CA Engineer with the anchor in the concrete uh, foundation the next uh, type of connection that is possible in CA Engineer is the so-called pinned connections according to ENV3. Uh, uh, you have four types that are supported in CA Engineer, basically all the types of ENV. Um, a welded plate and beam or uh, and welded to column or beam, such as sh shown in this picture. So this is the welded plate and beam welded to column. And this is the welded plate and beam welded to beam. So both welded uh, plates, both sides. Type 2 is the bolt plate and beam welded to column or bolted plate and beam welded to beam. Type 3 is the bolted angle and beam and column beam. So this is the bolted angle and beam which is connected to the column and this is the bolted angle and beam which is connected to the beam. And the final type, type 4, a short end plate that is welded to a beam and bolted to the column or bolted to the beam. So these are the possible pinned connections in SIA Engineer. We will try to uh, input some of these connections in an example later on. And the third and final possible connection is the bolted diagonal connection 
which is necessary to connect your uh, wind bracings, for example. That is also possible to um, calculate in SIA Engineer, to check and calculate it in SIA Engineer. Before I get started in C Engineer and input some connections, it can be interesting for the current users to know about uh, the improvements that are implemented since release 15 of C Engineer. A much wanted uh, feature was to implement the possibility to have a double haunched connection. And this is now possible to input and check in C Engineer 15. Here you can see that in 14 it was only possible to input uh, one haunch in a connection. Now you have the possibility to choose between a top haunch and a bottom haunch. So the user has a possibility to apply only one haunch or two haunch at a time and also the user can choose on which side the haunch should be uh, applied. Another improvement was to expand the bolt roll classification. First we only had the bolt roll classification in order to calculate the effective length um, based on Eurocode 3. But those do not um, cover all the possible, possible um, uh, bolt roll configurations. So we have uh, expanded the classification for both sides uh, based on the publication of joints in steel construction, moment resisting joints to Eurocode 3, and the publication of uh, P. Zutemeyer. Here you can see um, how it initially was. So this is according to Eurocode 3. You can check this if you go to table 6.5. Uh, you see the following uh, four uh, um, uh, situa situations. Also for the end plate, the following four. Um, thanks to both publication, we have expanded publications. We have expanded this in C Engineer 15 as follows. So now you'll have more possibilities that can cover multiple situations. Now uh, we can start inputting some connections in a steel hull. I will try to input uh, various types of connections into a steel hull. I will use the following steel hull as an example in order to show um, you the um, how 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 easy and uh, efficient uh, connection can be inputted in SIA Engineer. Various types of connection will be inputted into the steel hull, and also a detailed um, calculation uh, output will be shown. Now let's go to the project in SIA Engineer. You can do this as follows. Here you can see that. Uh, project is already inputted into a model. Uh, for those that aren't common in how to input a uh, steel structure in C Engineer, I would kindly ask you to look into uh, the webinar that has uh, been given by my colleague Jeff Bains. The webinar is called uh, Steel Structures. Now, uh, for inputting uh, connections into this model, you'll have to go to the steel menu since it's a steel connection. Double click on that. You have the possibility between beams and connections. We want to input a connection. Here you'll find the various types of <laughs> connections that are possible in C Engineer. On top you'll find uh, the connection setup. This is the general setting of, um, of all the connections in C Engineer. So it can be interesting to have a look at it. Uh, let us open it. Um, you'll see uh, in the connection setup uh, that you can set up uh, settings for bolts, welds or stiffeners, structural joints, uh, the expert system which will be handled later on, um, the parameters for the bolt, the diagonal and the various thicknesses. So if you go and have a look at the bolts, here you can find uh, the minimum end distance, minimum edge distance, etc. Um, you, you will always find a reference 
uh, from where these parameters come. A detailed reference can be found if you click on it. I click on this one, you'll see that the reference is Eurocode 3, uh, table 3.3. Uh, description minimum distance from a ball to end of an end plate gives us multiplication of this given as multiplication of this value with bo borehole diameter d0 um, for the welds for example you'll find that a minimum weld size of 3 millimeters is applied also if you click on it you'll find a reference to the code um, the structural joints uh, you'll find for example that the transformation of internal forces is by default in axis, in axis which means that um, the internal forces in the node by node I mean the intersection of the beam and the column axis are used you can also choose for in connection phase if you choose that one um, the internal forces at the connection will be used with other words, the internal forces at the position of of the end plate of a beam to column connection, for example. So you can change it in here. Apply stiffness classification check uh, in order to see if, of, if the applied stiffness in the model um, is the same or almost the same as, as the stiffness of the connection. The expert system will be handled later on in this webinar here you'll find uh, the settings for a bolted diagonal and uh, the finally you'll find the thicknesses that can be used so here you'll find the thicknesses of, of um, the possible plates that can be inserted in, into a connection uh, by place I mean the plates that are used uh, in order to insert a stiffener or an end plate or a base plate for example so that is the connection setup. Now let's try to insert a connection, for example, a column to beam connection uh, at this position. So we want to insert a connection that connects this beam with this column. How do we do that in SIA Engineer? Um, we select for example the frame bolted strong axis connection since it's a connection between both strong axes of uh, these two elements so we double click on this one next you select the node in which those two elements uh, come together so this is the node in here how do I do that I only make a, a window like this the program selects all the different uh, 1D elements that come together in that one node. Since it's a strong axis element, it will not take into account this wind bracing. It will only make a connection between these two elements. So the program recognizes uh, the elements that need to be taken into account. Um, I confirm by clicking on escape. You will see that the label occurs of the connection. Now I can input uh, the connection, uh, so I can choose to apply an end plate by clicking on that. You will see immediately that this is applied. Um, this end plate can be edited. If you click on the three points here, here you can change the steel quality of the end plate, the thickness of the end plate. Um, you can also change the dimensions of the end plate, the top uh, distance, uh, the bottom distance, the left, right distance. For instance, I'll take that the, I'll reduce the bottom distance from 20 millimeters to minus 5, for example. I click on OK, and you'll see that it is immediately changed. In order to get a connection between the those between these two elements course we'll need to provide bolts. I'll select it and by default the program inserts uh, two rows of bolts. Normally it is an M12 4.6 yes. Um, you can change it. Um, important to know is that um, the program automatically determines the possible rows with um, the correct uh, distances
so that it complies with the rules of Eurocode 3. I can show it to you so um, here you'll see always um, a message if, if the distance between two rows is too too narrow for example let's take ball throw 5 which has a distance of 260 if I put uh, another ball throw ball throw 4 on 255 for example like that and I will activate both ball throws 4 and 5 I will get an error that the distance is too narrow um, the vertical distance P1 between the bolt rows number 4 and 5 is smaller than the minimum limit so the program gives you uh, pushes you tower, towards a, a, a correct configuration of your of your bolt rows so let us choose for um, M20 instead of uh, M12 with a quality of 8.8 .8 like this. The program tells me that uh, the number of bolt rows will not be the same so I'll have to reset the bolt locations because I will now use bigger bolts. I click on yes. You see that the number of possible rows is reduced. I will apply um, two bolt rows at the top and one bolt row at the bottom. I'll click on OK before I click on it I can always I can also tell you that um, standard it's configured with two bolts per row but you can also change it to four bolts per row that is a possibility and the internal bolt distance can also be uh, changed in here so the distance the horiz horizontal distance between uh, the bolts in one row I click on OK to apply these settings like that and it is immediately applied um, another uh, thing I can add to this connection is a top and bottom stiffener for example click on it it is applied I click here on it it is also directly applied you can also see the welds by default these aren't visualized but I have uh, activated it so to let you show that that the welds are also calculated this will be shown in the output later on um, okay I have also the possibility to add a top haunch as stated before in the presentation you can also add a backing plate like that for example that's a backing plate um, a diagonal stiffener that goes like this I can show it to you like this or like that in that direction you can always uh, add a stiffener at the bottom haunch end in here a web doubler at the column side like that and update stiffness um, this will be handled later on in this same connection so um, this is the connection I only need to calculate the project first because I haven't done that yet and then I can look into the results of this connection so let's start uh, the linear calculation by clicking on calculation click on OK to start it now I get the message that the linear calculation has, has been done successfully I click on OK now I can check uh, this con uh, connection for a given load case or for a given combination for example I have already made an uh, Eurocode ULS set B combination um, the frame type I've set it to braced by default it is braced but you can also change it to unbraced uh, I click on refresh and then I'll go to the results by clicking here on results at the bottom here you can see a summary of uh, the checks on that connection you see that the moment uh, resistance check is uh, sufficient so 0 0.8 the normal force uh, check is also suffi sufficient uh, it gives a unity check of 0 0.12 uh, the same applies for the shear force check 0 0.22 the combination check of the moment and the normal force gives a unity check of 0 0.92 
Here you can see the stiffnesses uh, of the connection, SE and SE ENI. Um, the solicitating uh, for uh, internal forces, so the moment that is applied on that connection, the normal force and the shear force. Uh, these checks are okay because it says it it says it's it is also set in here connection satisfied this check, uh, stiffness check is also okay uh, the limiting part of the connection is the column flange that is in pending and the limiting part in compression is the column web in shear this check has been done for this combination um, so this is a summary of all the checks. If a certain check isn't okay, with other words, if the check is, uh, gives a unity check above one, uh, this will give a, this will be colored uh, red, so that the user directly sees uh, where uh, the problem uh, occurs. Okay. Now. Um, Let's have a look at the uh, detailed output of the connection. Uh, the user can uh, choose for a normal, a brief, and a detailed output. Uh, in the brief, you'll only get the unity check, so I'll show you that one. I'll click on refresh, and then I'll generate that output by clicking on open preview. Here you see a summary of unity checks. Now I'll choose uh, the normal output, which will provide the user much more information. Click on refresh. This gives more uh, information about all the different checks that have been applied according to Eurocode 3. Um, and when you choose the details, you'll get all the information you need click on details, I'll click on refresh, then we'll have a look into it. So you see the name of the connection, um, it's a single-sided uh, frame bolt that's beam to column connection. Uh, the connection has been uh, checked for this combination. The two 1D members that are uh, applied on this connection is a IPE270 uh, column and the uh, IP240 uh, beam which has a haunch uh, that's uh, so so it has the code i plus i fair because it's a, it has a variable uh, height a haunch of 200 millimeters high at the end okay and here you see um, the internal bolts also uh, the locations uh, internal bolt distance and the locations of these bolts the stiffeners, the thickness of the stiffeners, the thickness of the end plate, all this information, all these characteristics of this of this connection are here uh, mentioned in these tables. Now uh, here you'll see the different welds that have been applied on that bottom hunch. You'll see the partial safety factors that have been used, uh, the internal forces that are used for uh, checking the connection. Um, now in this point, point two, the des design moment resistant, uh, resistance will be um, calculated of this connection. First it starts with the column web and shear. Uh, this resistance is, is, is calculated, then uh, column web and compression. Uh, all these different uh, components from the component based uh, method, all these individual components are being calculated. You can always find a note uh, and also a reference to the Eurocode uh, where you can where that you can find formula that is used in this uh, calculation output. Also, the design tension resistance of the bolt row uh, will be calculated. Next, um, the classification will be done. First, at the column flange, bolt row adjacent to stiffener, other inner. Boltro, Boltro adjacent to stiffener, in which the uh, effective lengths can be uh, calculated for CP and NC, circular pattern and non-circular pattern of the failure modes. Um, next, um, 
the end plate the same will be done the classification the effective length uh, the force distribution in the bolt rows will be calculated in order to get a uh, total FTRD uh, and then you'll see the weak part here in the assessment of the shear and compression zone you see that the limiting resistance is 269 uh, uh, kilonewtons which is the minimum and this comes from the column weapon shear um, then you'll have um, the triangular limits and, and after that step the eventual uh, determination of MERD or the moment capacity of the connection uh, will be calculated. Uh, for this connection it has a capacity of um, 95 uh, kilonewton meters. Next the determination of uh, MERD for compressed haunch at beam will be done. This means that it will check uh, the moment capacity at the other side of the haunch. So, um, at the side of the haunch. This check will also be done by C engineer. Um, then you have the determination of NERD and uh, the normal force capacity, uh, the design shear resistance, uh, the stiffness calculation, uh, okay and then the check of the stiffness requirement uh, here uh, the check will be done of if um, the initial stiffness SEENI is inside the boundaries if you look at the graph at the bottom you'll have a, a better view of the situation basically it wants to say that um, I haven't inserted any hinge into this connection so uh, the program thinks that it is um, a rigid uh, connection and uh, so my connection has to be rigid enough uh, in order to to calculate with this assumption so the check will be done and if it uh, is, is inside the boundaries it is okay uh, you can see this in here in this graph the second graph uh, you see uh, uh, the uh, the upper boundary and the lower boundary and if it's in it it's okay also since it's in it it wants to say that uh, it's a rigid connection because my SEENI is between the boundaries of a rigid connection which is this boundary and this vertical uh, axis if my SEENI was in this boundary it was semi rigid it was between a rigid connection and a pinned connection uh, which will give me uh, a check of stiffness that isn't okay uh, you can solve this easily in SIA engineer by clicking on update stiffness which means that um, the soft um, the real stiffness of the connection will be applied into the connection with other words uh, a rotational um, uh, a hinge with a certain stiffness will be inserted into the model I will show you this uh, later on into the in, in this model also uh, interesting to see is he is the MV diagram shows the moment capacity of the connection it is stopped in here at uh, 96 I thought kilonewton meters 95.66 kilonewton meters um, and also the welds I can show you that also uh, are being calculated so the flange welds are 5 millimeter and the web welds are uh, the minimum of 3 millimeters so because uh, that was uh, in the setup and the connection setup that is that for the uh, detailed output uh, in the case that um, the connection isn't stiff enough uh, and the check of stiffness is not okay you will see that in here if you go to your results you'll see check of stiffness not okay uh, with other words um, you'll have to apply the real stiffness to to solve this issue this can easily be done as uh, previously stated you will only have to click on update stiffness and recalculate uh, because it will apply a hinge and the force distribution will be different with that uh, hinge with with the uh, with the stiffness of the connection uh, you will see that hinge appear into the model if I change the view to this one 
Now there isn't a hinge, but I have already selected it. The hinge will be applied after calculation. I'll have to all I also have to activate this to make it visible. Oh, it isn't necessary. So the hinge is applied. You can see it in here if I click on it. You see that the hinge has a certain stiffness, which is the stiffness of that connection. So that is the solution if the check of stiffness isn't okay. Okay, um, I'll do this like that. Now I can show you other uh, types of connections that are possible in SIA Engineer. I've already uh, mentioned them, but it's easier if you see how they are uh, introduced into the model. We've already uh, designed a frame rigid connection, so let's try to insert a pinned connection. Uh, for instance, in this position, I will go to uh, grid pinned. I double click on that. The program asks me to select the point of the connection. Let's say this point. I'll confirm with uh, the escape button, like that. Now the connection is entered. I have the possibility to change uh, the type of the uh, to specify the type of the connection. Is it a welded, a bolted, a cleat, cleat, cleat? It means um, an um, L profile with bolts at the both uh, on the both sides, or a short end plate. Let's take for instance a cleat like that. Uh, I will activate that cleat. Uh, I will change the type. Let's say I'll use an L profile 86. I'll introduce some bolts into it like that. And now I can click on refresh. I'll look into the results. and uh, the shear uh, check is OK. It gives me um, a unity check of 0 0.16, so the connection is satisfied. So that's basically it to introduce a grid pinned connection. It applies for all the other types of connection. You only have to make a, a selection of which type you want to introduce and then select a node where you want to apply that connection and that's basically it and you can start designing it uh, you can change the type of bolts you want to use um, the the position can be changed uh, etc so it has the same logic as we have done with the previous connection and you can do that for all for for the all other connections as well now you can look into the preview And this is a preview, a normal preview of a pinned connection. It basically checks the shear uh, resistance and if and if applicable uh, the the normal uh, resistance, if that's if that's okay or not. Now I'll try to introduce a third connection, for instance, uh, a base plate connection. Uh, which is a frame rigid connection, so I'll go to uh, frame bolted uh, strong axis like that. I'll select that position, that node like that. Connection, uh, the connection label is introduced. Now uh, the program automatically knows it's a column with a nodal support at the bottom and therefore um, will propose to insert a base plate. So if I click on it, the base plate is introduced. The same logic applies. You click on the three points and you can edit that base plate, its dimensions, uh, its thickness, its quality, steel quality, and so on. The anchor can also be introduced. If you click on that, you can modify the diameter of that anchor, the number of bolt rows, 
uh, are set up in correspondence with the diameter of the anchor like that you can also insert some flange liners shear iron and uh, if uh, if necessary update the stiffness or if you as you uh, if you always want to introduce the real stiffness of the connection you can always uh, click on that uh, you have the concrete data and the anchor data and the concrete data you'll find the concrete related parameters the concrete, uh, the concentration factor K J, K J, the joint coefficient beta J, uh, friction, uh, all these other parameters. If you use high bond bars or uh, plane bars, if you want to include friction or not into your anchors. Uh, the anchor data. This specifies. Uh, the anchor itself. You can uh, choose the overlength D, uh, the retour length, uh, and all the other parameters. Now we can uh, talk about the expert system. I'll go back to my slide like that. The expert system is a system of predefined uh, connection or user defined connections. Um, so for frame connections bolted, welded and pinned, uh, a connection database is available. The contents of this database consists of some predefined connections and can hold user-defined connections. Besides the geometrical data, the capacity properties and the stiffness properties for a given configuration are saved in this database. The capacity and stiffness values are based on the ultimate limit state of the joint. So basically when you introduce a connection, only the label, you can then click on load from expert database in the bottom right corner. The program will give you uh, some propositions uh, for possible connections with its unity check. Here you can see the source from where it, uh, it comes from the DSTV or it is calculated, etc. Uh, or the user can introduce a connection and then later on save it to the expert database so that it, uh, he or she can reuse it in uh, other uh, connections. Another interesting tool uh, is the creation of mono uh, connection mono drawings. Uh, this is done by a picture wizard, which uh, automatically generates uh, connection mono drawings of all your connections. So basically, at the click of a button, the user can generate uh, the following pictures of its connection with all the dimensions on it, uh, the different views, uh, and these connections can be uh, exported to other formats like uh, AutoCAD, uh, uh, PDF and others. So thanks to the picture wizard, uh, the user can generate these pictures. I will try to show it in an example. I'll go back to SIA Engineer as follows. Yes, now you'll have to go to the picture gallery click on that. We'll click on the wizard, new by wizard. It automatically knows that I want to create steel connection mono drawings. Okay. You can uh, modify the scale and the text scale factor if you wish. Uh, it is necessary for this example. Next. And we click on finish. Now it will generate automatically all these uh, pictures of all the connections in my model, so of my three uh, connections. And the pictures have been successfully generated, I'll click on close. They are all here, if I open it, I can see them right here. Like that. With the dimensions, so this is of my column beam connection. The weld sizes are also mentioned. Um, the other one is of the end plate of that column beam connection. The haunch dimensions. Uh, the top stiffener, the bottom stiffener. Uh, this is my other connection, my pinned connection. See the cleat 
L80 with a thickness of 6 millimeters. This is my base plate with its weld sizes, the anchors, and the base plate itself. Uh, these pictures can be further edited when you click on edit you can add uh, extra dimensions or, or text if you wish uh, or figures and then uh, save it and export it uh, into another format uh, so, you, so when you click on save picture to file you can change the format BMP, uh, AutoCAD a PDF format as possible. Okay, so that is the creation of connection mono drawings. The following topic is a general solution for almost every connection. Uh, CIA Engineer provides a general solution that can calculate almost every connection. Uh, we often get proposals from our clients uh, to implement certain connections that aren't covered by the euro codes and therefore um, mostly the, the, the clients do not offer any uh, calculation method so therefore we cannot implement it directly into our software but we have an alternative and that is by modeling the connection via 2D elements and uh, in combination with the module general plasticity. The checking of the connection is via the plastic stresses in the joint. And basically you'll, you'll look into the, uh, you'll model the joint via 2D elements. This is an example without the plastic modules. So you'll see the peaks uh, stresses occur uh, above the uh, maximum stress of 235 uh, megapascal but if you activate the plastic module you can uh, see that the uh, connection still satisfy be uh, satisfies because uh, the plastic uh, stresses are distributed along the joints so the maximum stress doesn't surpass the 235 uh, megapascal Let's try to model this into uh, SIA Engineer and uh, show you how easily this can be done. Now let's go back to SIA Engineer and open that project. As you can see I've modeled the whole structures, structure via 2D elements. In order to in, uh, introduce a plastic capacity um, you'll have to um, change the material uh, I've changed it already so I can show you what I've done if I look into the material property of that uh, beam or 2D element you can see I've uh, changed the material behavior to isotropic elastoplastic for Mises uh, by default it's set to elastic so you only have to change this and model your uh, beam via 2D elements and your column via 2D elements and induce the, uh, introduce the connection. Next you'll have to uh, calculate this uh, project uh, via nonlinear ca calculation. After that the results are available. You'll have to go to the 2D stresses. Uh, you'll select, for instance, a certain combination. I have made combination 2, which, which has a loading of 35 kilonewtons. I click on refresh. This is a linear combination, so I would expect these uh, peaks above the 235. So the plastic behavior isn't uh, taken into account. But when I uh, choose the nonlinear combinations, which have these uh, plastic capacity, uh, you will see that the stresses will not surpass the 235 uh, megapascal. They will be distributed uh, along the joint of the connection. So this is a way to, to model uh, any uh, possible connection, almost any possible connection uh, in CIA Engineer, even when you do not have the proper uh, calculation method. 
and then I go back to the slide the final topic is the conclusion of course We can conclude that uh, the connection module of SIA Engineer has an uh, easy interface for designing connections. The user has the possibility to input real connection stiffnesses into the model. Uh, the expert system provides uh, uh, time efficiency, efficiency for um, standard connection connections. The user can always reuse uh, typical connections into his model. Um, you can also create uh, by a simple click on a button uh, connection mono drawings that can be exported to other programs like AutoCAD, uh, PDF, etc. The calculation output is very clear with uh, different uh, levels uh, the brief, the normal, and the detailed output. And we provide a general solution for almost every connection via the modeling of connections via 2D elements in combination with the module general plasticity. So that's it for this webinar of Steel Connections and Steel Engineer. I hope that my presentation was clear and understandable. Please do not hesitate to type any questions in the question uh, box of GoToWebinar. We will try to answer them immediately. If the number of questions is too high, we will create a list of uh, the questions and answers and we will send them to you afterwards via email. I would like to thank you all for attending and of course for your attention. Thank you very much.